A bullet is a projectile. It's the part that flies through the air. And the press often shows a cartridge as a bullet. It's not. You know, the bullet is this part. The rest of it is a case. Okay, we have a, a cartridge, which is also known as brass sometimes, uh, as a casing sometimes, but it's the cartridge case. And then the cartridge case holds powder. There's a primer that sets off the powder that's pushed into the bottom of it. It's a separate part, but it's pushed in. And then there's the bullet. And the bullet is primarily what we are concerned with at Corbin. Well, with reloading, uh, you can make your own bullet. You can adjust the weight. You can adjust uh, or choose different styles of bullets than what you can buy from the factory. And you can get calibers and shapes that are just simply not available from any factory, including calibers for your grandfather's old rifle that they don't make ammunition for anymore. Yes, in fact, a lot of times a, a, a 30 caliber air gun might be a 300, whereas a 30 caliber uh, cartridge gun might be a 308. And there's some confusion in that. But you can tailor those numbers. You can, you can order custom sizes. You can go 301, you can go 301, you can go 305, you, know, you can do anything you want. Uh, whatever shoots best in your particular gun, we can make a die for it. And one of the ways we can help a little bit uh, with the cost on doing that is if you buy a larger size, such as a, say it's a 302, and that seems to be shooting okay, but then you try a factory bullet of some kind that's maybe a 301 or a 300 and it shoots a little better, all you have to do is buy a reducing die. And you can push that bullet through it, make it smaller, uh, you can't go the other way too easily. You can't go up, but you can go down very easily. Yes, bullet jackets have been one of the real difficulties of the whole swaging field, and it's one of the things that we did that other companies that made swage dies over the years didn't do, and that was to provide all the materials, the jackets, the lead wire, the information, you know, not just the dies and presses, but everything that supported them. Jackets were one of the main things. They're very difficult to get consistency. You have to really spend a lot of time and effort with manufacturers, with copper uh, providers. Uh, we, we bought so much copper that didn't work. It would be inconsistent in green, it would be inconsistent in width. We'd have to reject it and send it back. So it's not something that I think is an easy thing to do, but we do it because it's necessary to support the bullet switching. Our jackets are very, very consistent. Um, they're, they're made from material that you can form. You can, you can shape up without wrinkling, folding, and cracking, which is one of the problems you get with just random copper. Well, a die is a cylindrical body that has a hole in it, and the shape of the hole is kind of what is uh, determining the purpose of that particular die. Most of them are straight through, the coarse wages, the coarse cedars, but the point forming dies have a bullet shaped hole with a little ejector pin at the end of it. That's the only difference. You couldn't tell them from the outside which is which. You can tell by the markings on them. Uh, the punches are the parts that go into the die. This is an external punch. It hangs down from a punch holder in the press, which is this device here is a punch holder. This, this hangs down from the top. And you can adjust it up and down to control the weight. The internal punch is the one that stays inside the ram all the time. It slides up and down like this to give you room to put the part in, form it, and it supports the pressure from the other side. And then when you lower the handle on the press, it pushes the bullet out automatically. Well, the main difference is with the lead bullet, you can, you can usually make them all in one die because there's no blocking of any bleed holes. You can have the bleed holes like this die has got a bleed hole in the side of it. So you could form an air gun projectile or a shotgun slug or, or um, a black powder uh, rifle bullet with this die alone <clears throat> because you, you could have a bullet shaped cavity in there, push it in with the punch, push the lid in, and, and you'll adjust the weight so it bleeds off anything surplus to it. 
Well, with a jacket, you can't really do that because the jacket would block the hole. So you have to adjust the lead core first, and then put that in a second die and squeeze it into the jacket and expand the jacket, and then take that to a third die and form the point. So there's usually a three-step operation. Uh, yes, the O-Jive is the, uh, the curve of the, of the bullet. <clears throat> it's typically, there's a Spitzer O-Jive, which you mean the German for sharp, and that is a tangent O-Jive. It means that the, you swing an arc starting tangent to the side of the bullet and just cross the center line. It's measured in calibers. So a one caliber would just be one caliber wide and swing an arc. It would be a very blunt bullet. This is about a two caliber. Uh, the typical rifle bullet for jacketed bullets would be like a six caliber, six caliber radius. And the minimum that you could possibly have would be 0.5 caliber because that would be half the radius would be a round nose. You couldn't go shorter than that or it wouldn't close it. And then there's the elliptical ogives, which are all elliptical curves. And they're measured by length, since the radius changes constantly on an ellipse, so you have to measure the length. This would be a typical elliptical curve. This is about a half E. Yeah, the rebated bow tail is a compromise between a standard bow tail and a flat base. It has the accuracy of the flat base uh, with the lower drag on the base of a standard bow tail. And people say, well, why, if it's so good, don't all the factories do it? Well, they don't need to. I mean, they've, they've established a lot of advertising and a, a lot of money and equipment to make what they're making now. And a standard boat tail feeds better in fully automatic equipment. So that's the reason you don't see rebated boat tails very much. Lapua of Finland uh, kind of made that famous, the rebated boat tail. What it does is it has a little step. Uh, in the back end before the boat tail angle starts. And that little step provides a, uh, a pressure seal uh, against the bore, so you, you're working at 90 degrees to the bore, not trying to compress the base in at an angle. When it pops out the end of the barrel, it, it forms a, um, a ring of gas coming out instead of uh, having the gas follow the boat tail uh, as it would on a nozzle of a hose. A standard boat tail is very much like a water hose nozzle where the, uh, the gas pressure will flow up around and, and have laminar flow around the, around the base, follow the sides, and then break up in front of the bullet because it's going about 10,000 feet a second where the bullet may be going three or 4,000 feet a second. And so the bullet will actually shoot through its own turbulence with a standard boat tail and that'll cause 10 or 15 percent uh, variance in where it hits. Uh, with the rebated boat tail and the flat base both, uh, the gas comes out and flies out in a ring. And you can see that on high-speed photography that you get a ring of gas and you're shooting through the clear space in the center. So that saves you a 10 to 15 percent uh, accuracy variation. If you like this video and you want to see more, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave us a comment below. Thanks.